Hello and welcome to another Spartan Athletics webcast for the basketball teams. The women's basketball team went one and one on their road trip to Fresno State, Nevada, and now they return home for two more games here at the Event Center. First on Thursday the 2nd to play Utah State, who is second in the conference, before playing Idaho on Saturday the 4th. Here to talk more about the women's team is their head coach, Tim Lacoste. Well, I've been to Fresno State several times, and that's a tough place to play, and uh, they're on top of the conference for a reason. Uh, with that said, I thought we did some things well in that game. We actually uh, out-rebounded them, shot the ball better, but the turnovers were the big difference. And we got to learn to take better care of the ball, especially against the kind of pressure that they brought. So I think that was a very valuable learning lesson for us, and uh, the team really responded well going up to Nevada, uh, took much better care of the ball, and then uh, got our first road win in conference. So that was a huge step towards our goal of competing for the WAC championship. How important is it to get that first WAC road win and kind of prove it to the rest of the conference that you can do it on the road? Yeah, if you want to win a championship in the conference, you got to win on the road. Uh, so that was a huge step for us. Uh, okay, now there's been five games in the WAC that you've played. Any surprises with where the teams are kind of falling into place at this point? Um, no. <laughs> the Fresno, I think, is, is the, the team to beat. Uh, Utah State is 4-1. and one. We're 3-2. and two. And then the rest of the conference is very competitive. I think on a given night, you know, the, the whack's wacky in that way that anything can happen. Um, I like where we're at right now. I think uh, we're in a good position to uh, compete for the top spot. Uh, this week is going to be huge for us. Terea Cunningham really is kind of blooming into a good offensive player for you. And she's progressed. We've talked about this in the past, but she's really progressed. Now more on the offensive side. Is that something that's uh, kind of sprung on a little bit lately? Yeah, you know, she's been putting a lot of time in, um, as of all the players. Terea's really been focusing on being more of an offensive threat and using her athleticism to uh, score, get teammates open. And she's just getting uh, better and better with each game. You can see that in her numbers. Another career high in last game, 21 points. Same with Maisha Broaden. She... Had another great game in Nevada, and she's seeming to be on the same up scale that uh, Cunningham is, is, right? Oh, yeah. Mai is, uh, she's really been solid on the defensive end, protecting the basket, rebounding for us. And she's putting herself in a spot to be successful offensively for uh, layups, uncontested shots, rebounds. I'd like to see her get to the foul line a little bit more. Uh, but she's been a big part of our success. And you talked about the progression and, and the kind of the outline you had for this team at the beginning of the season. Where are you in that progression in the outline? Yeah, we're right on track with the roadmap. We're in WAC right now. We're going to complete the first round this week, and we'll be in a position to be in the top spot. Um, that's what we want. We want to compete for the WAC championship. The team keep getting better with each game each week. Uh, so I'm really pleased with the group's effort. I think uh, there's room for us to, to get better, and I think the team knows that. And I'm really looking forward to uh, Thursday. Yeah, another couple of home games this weekend. It's got to be nice to be in front of the home crowd. Yeah, and in Utah State's 4-1. and one, We're 3-2, and two, so this is a huge game. All right, thanks, Coach, for joining me. Good luck. Thanks. See you Thursday. All right, Coach. Uh, one loop through the whack, halfway done. Uh, obviously not where you guys want to be. Uh, what, what needs to change in the second half? Well... I think there's two, two really main components. The first is we need to do a better job defensively. We're, not a, we're an improving defensive team, but we're not a consistently good defensive team. And we're just giving up too many easy scores, uh, be they putbacks or missed assignment, open shots. What I think we've done is we forced secondary shooters to beat us, but some of the secondary shooters have beaten us in some games. Um, I think the second piece is we have to be better on, under duress Really, in almost every game in conference, we've had a chance to win deep into the second half. And I think the Utah State game is a great example. And we kind of lose our focus. I think some of that's our youth and our inexperience. But we need to be more composed. Uh, we, we need to be harder edged when that game's on the line. And we haven't yet had many, many plays where our players have stepped into that play and said, OK, I'm going to make the play now defensively to stop, to get the stop. I'm going to make the offensive. I'm going to make the basket. Um, and I just think that's the difference. You know, the, the, the difference between us and the, most of the teams in our conference is not very great. Um, but, but also having said that, they've done those things that I'm suggesting, and we haven't, with, and, and we have to accept that and own that. And as a staff and as a head coach, I have to own that, and we have to keep working hard and diligently with our guys because there's a lot more basketball still to play. And we have so many young guys at the core of this team that we also have to think they need to acquire these lessons now so next November they'll 
be much more prepared to handle these situations. Well, back to Utah State. You were without Keith Schamberger for the first time this year. Uh, obviously tough. Uh, how's his health? Um, it's improving. I, I think, and, and just we should address it, there was a misunderstanding coming out of the Idaho game that I really think we need to clear up. He was ejected from the game, but he was not suspended for the next game. And Lawrence, I know, has spoken to me about that, and he asked that that be addressed. Uh, I spoke directly with the conference while the film was being reviewed, and it did not rise to the level of an automatic suspension. It was not a fighting incident. It was not a closed fist incident. It was not an injury didn't occur. It was a frustration reaction. It was inappropriate, and he received the correct punishment in as much as he was suspended from that game. He, or I better put, he was ejected from the Idaho game with two minutes to go, whatever it was. The reason we didn't play him against Utah State was more because of his back. His back's been tightening. Uh, it's a, due to an elbow he received in the ribs against La Tech. And it's, Keith's had some back issues his whole career so far. And so we're, we, we just, he, he really was stiff against Idaho. He didn't move well against Bakersfield. And we just saw a cascade going the wrong direction. So in speaking to Scotty, he felt we need to shut him down for at least one game and then see how he was this week been treating him real aggressively, and, and hopefully he'll be ready to go on Saturday. It's also nice because you get that week off. You don't have a Thursday game this week. And that was our thinking. The, the thinking was when you have an extended period, that's the time you sit a guy out. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but no, that gives you those extra days, and, we, and, and he needed them. So, and I thought the guys responded real well to it. We handled the ball really well against Utah State. We, didn't, we weren't nervous with the ball, and Keith does a lot of that for us. So it was, it, in, in, on the plus side, DJ showed he could really handle the point almost as a full-time point guard. Uh, and that was a really good thing for us. Well, in the time that you, uh, after the game to now, you found out that Sac State's going to be your bra bracket buster opponent, which means that you guys don't have to leave the Bay Area for quite some time here. It must be nice to stay at home for a while. No doubt about it. We've played, I, I've lost count, I think nine of our last 11 on the road, and it's been hard. I mean, just, you know, you got to play your games home and away over the course of the whole season. You have to play them. And we missed an opportunity uh, against La Tech here at home. Really, we, re we really did. Uh, this is the second year in a row we've had five of our first seven on the road in the WAC, and next year's WAC schedule is the exact same thing for us. So eventually we're going to have to figure this out and solve this. It's definitely hurt our team, and it's magnified because of our, our youth. Um, the Sac State draw is good because of geography. Uh, no one's easy to play, so that's out the window. It's, just, it's good because of geography, exactly the point you made. We don't have to get on a plane. We don't have this big extended grueling trip. So really we only have one set of flights left in the regular season, the La Tech New Mexico State swing. And, and that's very good for us, I think, and, and will be good for us as we, close, as we close down the stretch here. All right, Hawaii on Saturday, not only is it a big game, but a ceremony uh, at halftime and, and before the game, Darnell Hillman going to have his jersey retired, the third in the program's history. How special is that for the players to come and see? Well, I, I really like the idea. First of all, I think Darnell Hillman is very worthy of the honor. He was a a fine player here and an outstanding pro and good citizen of basketball for a long time. Um, I, I've met nobody at San Jose State who's ever had a negative thing to say about Darnell Hillman. So he's a great choice as far as everything I know. And I'm glad this has been put together. One of the things, like we go to Utah State, and I mentioned this on air, there are, they've had 30 appearances in the NCAA tournament in the NIT. You know, we've had four, I think. And their legacy is deep. And where I don't think our legacy is as deep in terms of that level of success, we do have some success back there, and it's been too often ignored. And we need to reach back and help build that foundation and connect the generations, however you want to put it. But it's, it's a richly deserved honor. I'm really, I'm, I don't have much to do with it. I'm just going to be there, but I'm proud to be there and uh, proud to be representing the current team at San Jose State, and our players will definitely be uh, informed and educated about Darnell Hillman prior to the weekend. All right, thanks, Coach. Good luck this weekend. All right, thanks, Justin. That'll wrap up this week's episode. Again, you can catch this webcast every Tuesday on the San Jose State Athletics website, sjsuspartans.com, or on the YouTube channel. Again, the men's team plays on Saturday only, the fourth against the Rainbow Warriors of Hawaii. And the women's team play two games this week, one on Thursday the 2nd against the Utah State Aggies, and also again on Saturday against the Idaho Vandals.